If you're a shooter who buys their own ammunition over the counter, fire forming is a non-issue. If you're a hand loader, it's a pretty big deal. You only get one chance to make good brass. Welcome to Neck of the Dots. Fire forming is the process of expanding the brass to meet the chamber dimensions. Now, technically this happens every single time you fire the brass, but fire forming is commonly referred to as the very first firing of new brass. The goal of fire forming is to expand the brass to the same dimensions as the chamber. The hand loader then buys the right resizing die so that the correct amount of resizing takes place. There's three main benefits to this. Decreased work hardening, increased case life, and increase in precision and accuracy. I am a short range bench rest competitor and a hunter, so I'll typically do 50 pieces of brass for each barrel. If you are a shooter who fire forms a lot more brass than that, uh, there may be some different methods that you want to research other than the ones that I'm going to show you today. My recommendation, do not load up all the pieces of brass that you want to fire form. You want to do one piece of brass, fire form it, and then get all the measurements you need from that first case. And then you can load up the rest of your brass. That first case might be a sacrificial lamb. As with most of my videos, they correlate to a written version that can be found on ctdshooting.com. For this video, I'm going to fire form brass for two different rifles. One is a hunting rifle, which is a 6mm Remington Ackley. And I'm going to do 35 pieces of brass for that. Behind me is a light varmint competition rifle where I'm going to do 50 pieces. The process is very, very similar for both of them. However, there's just a few subtle differences that I want to point out when fire forming for an Ackley versus a regular chamber. Hi, my name is Jason Stanley with Connect the Dots. If this is the type of information that you'd like to learn about, I'm asking you to do two things. Like and subscribe. Those two things will help connect the dots continue to grow and get better. Thanks for watching. The first step is you might need to anneal your brass. I only anneal my brass before fire forming if I have to expand the necks. So for example, on the 30BR, I had to expand the necks from 6 to 30. Therefore, I'm going to anneal before I fire form. On the Ackley, I did not have to expand the necks, therefore I'm not going to anneal the Ackley brass before fire forming. Step number two, it's time to check for length. I like to have my brass slightly under the maximum case value. On my 30BR, I know that the maximum value is 1.520. This piece, I've already trimmed it, 1.518. That's right where I want to be. On um, the Ackley, I, I honestly don't know exactly what the value is. I know my reamer said 2.23 or 2.24, something like that. And this brass is at 2.228. So I'm under the value. In my experience, the brass that I have fire formed all pulls back. It gets shorter. I, I can't say that that's always the case. I just don't have experience with every single chamber out there. Uh, but in my experience, the brass pulls back slightly, so I want to give as much case length for that pullback to happen as I can. Step number three, you want to chamfer and deeper your necks. I have already done this when I turned the necks on my, on my 30BR. But on the six Ackley, this is just factory brass, so I'll make sure I chamfer and deburr that so I can seat the bullet smoothly. Step four and step five go together. Step four, it's all about your shoulder bump. I want to have in between five and ten thousandths shoulder bump on my initial firing. That's going to allow the case to have a full head of steam to help shape that shoulder. On an Ackley, that's a different story. 
I want to have 3000's crush fit. Uh, that's going to help keep the case in place when the firing pin hits that primer so that the shoulder can expand to the 40 degrees. Uh, step five, that's about which neck bushing you use. I like to have 4,000 neck tension on fire for me. The question is, well, how do I know what those measurements are? And the answer is, you don't. That's why you're only fire forming one piece of brass. From that one piece of brass, you can then decide if you need to change your shoulder bump or your bushing. Step six, it's time to add some powder. I want to use a stout load when I fire form brass. What that means to me is I want to use roughly a grain and a half under what I think my final load is going to be. On a cartridge that I'm familiar with, for example this 30BR, I know roughly where my final load is going to be, so I simply subtract a grain and a half. On a new to me cartridge, like this 6 Ackley, I have to refer to a reloading manual. I find a powder that I have, an average load that's in the reloaded manual, and I subtract a grain and a half. Remember, I'm only doing one case at a time. I'm only doing that first case. I'm gonna check for pressure signs, I'll check the bolt lift, I'll check the primer pockets. I'm also gonna check to see how the shoulder forms. Based on those items, I can then go up or down on my powder charges for the remaining cases. You want to take lots of notes while fire forming. You know, what bushing did you use? How much powder did you use? What was your seating depth? You're only doing one piece of brass. And so you want to be able to remember what you did so that you can make adjustments for the remaining pieces. Step seven, you want to seat the bullet. I routinely use 25 thousandths or more jam when fire forming brass. A prerequisite to getting this case to fire form correctly is to have the base of the case back against the bolt face. A long seating depth and tight neck tension will accomplish that in two ways. Number one, when you chamber the round, the long seating depth and tight neck tension will force that case back against the bolt face. And number two, when you fire it, the firing pin will hit the primer and it won't push the case forward. It'll just ignite the round. Long seating depth and tight neck tension are two important keys in fire forming. I'm getting ready to do step eight. I'm out at my cabin and I plan on doing everything outside, but it's cold and it's windy out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do as much as I can inside and then just go outside to shoot. So step eight, what you wanna do is you wanna take your favorite gun oil and I just spray some on a rag. And then I take the brass that I'm gonna fire, the rounds I'm gonna fire, and I just lightly roll it through there. I'm not trying to soak anything, you know, just the slightest amount of, of oil is gonna help that case not stick to the chamber when I fire it. Step nine, we're gonna fire it. Like I said, it's cold, it's windy. I'm just gonna leave the case in there. I'm trying to get this done as fast as I can. Back home in my warm gun room, um, I do need to apologize a little bit. I was pretty short when we, when I was out firing, but guys, I was cold. I was just trying to get that done as fast as I could. Plus, there's not a whole lot to talk about. Once you get your case oiled up, you simply pull the trigger. When I came home, I ejected both pieces of brass, and there was no sticky bolt lift. I'm, I'm looking at the primers. There's no cratering. There's no flattening of the primers. Um, the shoulders, they look decently sharp. They're, they're not going to be perfect yet after the first firing. It usually takes two to three firings. Uh, but all those things tell me that my seating depth and my powder charge is right where it needs to be. Now, because I have this fired case, now I know where to set my resizing die. On the Ackley, remember I want 3000's crush fit. On the 30BR and regular chambers, I like five to 10 thousandths um, shoulder bump on that. If you're wondering, this 30BR case started out at 1.518. 
And now it is 1.513. 1.513. So that's roughly 5 thousandths pullback, which is pretty standard on 30BR. The 6 Ackley, this started out at 2.228. And now it is 2.2. That one's 2.213. We'll see what this one says. 2.213. So what is that? Five, 15 thousandths setback. So you can see these cases both uh, pulled back, but they didn't pull back the same amount. Now that I have my two standard cases, I know how to set up all my equipment, and I can go ahead and load and, and fire form all these pieces of brass. I'm not going to bore you with that, um, but that does lead me into the last step, and that's step 10. Once I get all these pieces fire formed, I'm going to re-anneal them. I'm going to anneal everything that I have. <clears throat> what that does, that takes some of that stress out of the brass, because, you know, this Ackley, it moved quite a bit. 30BR, it still moved, but, you know, not near as much as the Ackley. So there's a lot of stress put into that case. So I want to anneal to, to relieve that stress and then that will help fully shape the shoulder on the following firings. It usually takes three firings to fully shape the shoulder on a rifle case. That's why custom die makers want you to have three firings on any brass before you send it to them. However, this is good enough that I can now start the load development with this brass. As I mentioned earlier, on regular brass like this 30BR, I want five to ten thousand shoulder bump on the first firing. However, on the second and third firings, because this is competition brass, I only want to move that shoulder a half to a thousandths. On the Ackley, I want to have three thousandths crush fit on that first, first firing. But then because this is hunting brass, I'm going to move that back roughly one to one and a half thousandths on the, on the next firings. Something to be mindful of. It, it doesn't happen all the time, but it's just something to check. This shoulder is still moving. And if you have your sizing dice set up after the second firing, just check it. I don't know if you'll have to or not or have to move it, but it's just something to be careful of. You might have to move that sizing die up until the third firing. After that, work hardening is going to be the main reason why you'd have to move your sizing die. I have to give credit to Alan Nias from South Dakota, Randy Robinette from Iowa, and Mike Bigelow from Iowa. We were basically sitting around after a match one day and we started talking about fire forming. All three of those guys shared what they do, and I simply took what I like from each one of them and created the process that I just shared with you. In much the same way, that's what Connect the Dots is all about. I will never do anything where I say, this is the only way to do it. I simply want to share things that work for me, and then maybe you can take one or two things from it and add to your own process. Until next time, enjoy the experience.